With all the crazy things going on in the world right now and social distancing and all that stuff, I've been approached multiple times now about people trying to set up live streams so they can broadcast their church services. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a multi-camera live stream for church service or any other kind of function like this using nothing but your cell phone. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss a new video that comes out. Now I realize that everyone that watches this content is not going to be a technical wizard. So for that reason, I wanna make sure that I make everything as step-by-step -step as I can so that no matter who you are, you can get quality results using this method. And quality results does not mean that you need to spend a lot of money. Everything that I'm going to show you today, you can do with your cell phone camera. That's right, your cell phone camera. And you can use as many as you want to put together a great broadcast. Now I'm going to show you how to do it as if you were all in the same place in the church. But the method I'm going to show you today doesn't have to be all from one location. You could have your pastor in one location and you can have people doing readings in another location. Put this all together in one live stream. So this process can work on many different types of streams as well. Trust me, I'm gonna make this as easy and painless as possible so that everyone can do it. And in order to do that, I'm gonna split this video into four sections. In the first section, I'm gonna cover the cameras you're going to use and talk about the differences you're gonna find, whether it's a brand new iPhone or a five-year-old iPhone, like this iPhone 6. In the second section, I'm gonna cover audio for your broadcast and the type of options you're going to have to make sure that you can get quality sound. The third segment is going to show you how to put all this together, your cameras and your microphones, using OBS Studio. I'm gonna walk you through how to set up the broadcast and the settings that you're going to wanna to use to make sure that you can put out the highest quality broadcast. In the final section, I'm gonna cover different ways to connect these things depending upon if you're in the same building or you're working separately. I know, this means talking a little bit about networking, but just a little bit and I'll make it really easy for folks to understand. Taking a little bit of time to look at these things is going to give your stream the consistency and quality that you're really looking for. So let's start with cameras. A lot of people think you can't put together a good quality image unless you have a DSLR. I'm here to tell you that's just not the case, at least not for live streaming. A cell phone can do amazing things. And now I'm going to show you. This is my DSLR connected directly to my computer. This is my iPhone 10 using the rear-facing camera and streaming to my computer. For those who think, well, I don't have a new fancy phone, here's the rear-facing camera on my old iPhone 6 streaming to OBS. Now, is the DSLR better? Sure. First, it costs as much as the top-of-the-line cell phone and doesn't make any calls or surf the web. Plus, it's directly connected to the laptop. A great setup for a small studio, but not ideal for what we want to do here. Secondly, my studio is set up to light my DSLR camera, and the lighting setup for the phones should be completely different. So you notice that I'm a bit washed out in those, and that's because the lighting is not optimal for a cell phone. If you look at the backgrounds in the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 6 images, you're going to see that the backgrounds are nearly identical to what you see on the DSLR. The difference is that I'm kind of washed out and that's only because if I adjusted my lighting, it would be much better. You notice that all the streaming phones look pretty close to the DSLR and the difference between the iPhone X and the 6 is not noticeable enough that it really matters. So now you can see that image quality isn't a problem. The next step is to load Skype on each of the phones that you plan to use for your live broadcast. This is the software we're going to use to broadcast your video to OBS. All you have to do is download the software from the App Store, either iPhone or Android, it doesn't matter which, and then create an account if you don't already have one or just log into your existing account. In order to create an account, all you need is an email address. Everything else is totally free. The beauty of this is that you don't need to own 10 cell phones to have a broadcast with 10 people. 
Everyone owns a cell phone and they can use the one they already have. The only other thing you're really going to need is a tripod for each cell phone you plan to use. And Amazon has some pretty cheap cell phone tripods, kind of like this one I've been using forever. I'm relatively certain that this was like $9. There's going to be a link in the description if you're looking for something like this. The other option is to stack some things on top of one another and put the cell phone on top of there in the position that you want it. But you're going to find that if you're going to do this every week or pretty often, picking up one of these, it will be a big time saver. The next step in the process is going to be adding audio. Now, if you're going to do your church service broadcast where everyone is broadcasting from separate locations in their own home, then you can use the audio that comes right off the cell phone. But if you're going to do the broadcast in the confines of the actual church, you're probably going to run into problems just like this if you're going to use your cell phone's audio system. And trust me, audio is the most important part of your broadcast. People will live with crappy video, but if the audio's not good, they're going to just find something else to watch. So you don't want to use your cell phone audio if you're actually using your phones in the church to do the broadcast. Luckily, most churches actually have a sound system set up right in the church. And this makes it a heck of a lot easier. All you have to do is use the microphones that are already in the church, you know, like these. And most times the minister has some sort of a lapel mic or something that's wireless. And all of these microphones go into a soundboard in another room. And you're just going to set up the laptop that's going to configure and broadcast the live stream right next to that soundboard. You take the output from the soundboard, which would normally go into the speakers of the sound system, plug it into your computer or your laptop. Then you set that as the input in OBS, and wow, you're gonna have perfect sound. Now, I realize that not every church has an amazing sound system, and I totally understand that. Some churches are bigger or smaller than others. In this case, you might wanna just spend a little bit of money to pick up some wireless lapel microphones, or something like that. But in a pinch, you can actually use something like this or wireless headphones. And you just configure it so that Skype is accepting those wireless headphones as the audio input, and you're wearing them right here, which means they're going to pick up your voice, they're not going to pick up the audio from the background and all the echo, and they're at least a relatively inexpensive option that you can use. And most people have a set of wireless headphones, and if they don't, they probably have a set of headphones that came with their cell phone, and this has a little microphone in it. And believe it or not, this works pretty good. The only drawback to using something like this is you've got to be pretty close to the camera. So you're going to have to take that into account. Ideally, if the church has its own audio system, that's the one you want to plug into and use. So now that you understand all of the audio options that are going to be available, let's go into OBS and I'll show you how to set everything up. The first thing we want to do on the computer we're going to stream with is install the NDI plugin. This is what's going to enable us to have amazing audio for our live streams. The links to these plugins will be in the description, but I'll walk you through the setup. The first thing I do is go to this OBS software page here. It's actually part of the forum. Then I click the release page on GitHub. Then scroll down to the OS you're using, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. There are two things you need to download and make sure are installed on your computer. The NDI runtime and the actual NDI plugin. So I download the NDI runtime file. Once you download it, you go to the location, you double click it, then you click continue. After clicking continue a couple of times, you can install it. Now that I have the runtime installed, I need to download the actual plugin file. To do that, I just follow the instructions. I download the plugin file for my Mac. I double click it or on Mac, you can run into this problem where it doesn't like it because it's from the internet. So you can right click on it and click open and then open again. Then I just follow through the installation. Once it's installed, you can open OBS Studio. If you click tools at the top, you're going to see NDI output settings. That means you installed it properly. Let's go into Skype on the computer and set it up so we can use it in OBS. When you have Skype open, you want to go to Preferences. This is going to be located in different places on Windows and Mac, but it's going to have the same features once you open up your Preferences. Then we want to go to Calling. We want to click Advanced. And we just want to make sure this Allow NDI Usage is checked. And that's all we need. We can exit out of here. 
Now we're going to configure OBS for your live stream and we're going to put each camera in a separate scene. So that means that if you have a scene at the altar like this one, you can easily switch between that and a scene at the pulpit like this one. It's as easy as clicking a button. And those aren't the only two cameras that you can use. You can have as many cameras as you want and set them in different locations. As far as I know, there's not any major limit to how many people you can have on a Skype call. So in order to build this scene, we're going to need to connect people to our Skype call. And that's pretty simple. You just take this link and you share it to the folks that you want to connect. And now other people are joining the call that I sent the link to. There's Pastor Mike and there's Pulpit Mike. Yes, I realize these are both me. It's a simulated event because, well, I can't go to a church and I don't have two friends to bring with me either. Now that Pastor Mike and Pulpit Mike have joined me on Skype, we're almost ready to go and set up our stream. There is one thing. In Skype, in the top left-hand corner, you just want to make sure that there's this little red dot that says Stop NDI. That means your NDI plugin is working properly and you have Skype set up to broadcast NDI. Let's jump over into OBS and finish setting up our stream. The first thing I'm going to do is rename the default scene. I'm going to call this one Alter. The next thing that I'm going to do is create another scene. I click the little plus in the bottom left hand corner and that's going to bring up a box. I'm just going to name this scene Pulpit. Now we want to populate our scene with our guests. So we're going to select the altar scene and we're going to go down and click the plus in the bottom of Sources. Then I'm going to select the NDI plugin and I'm going to call this one Pastor Mike. Now under source name, I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to select one of the NDI sources. You don't really know which one you're getting, so it's kind of the luck of the draw. You can see it puts it up in the top left hand corner here. So we're going to need to resize this box. I'm going to right click on this, go to transform, and then I'm going to click fit to screen. Now it fills up the entire window. And if you have a Skype watermark in the top right hand corner, maybe you want to resize this box just a little bit to move that off the screen. That's totally up to you. Once you get it set up exactly where you want it, I'm going to go ahead back and right click on it again. I'm going to go into transform and then I'm going to edit the transform. And I just want to make sure that scale to inner bounds is set. And then I'm going to click close and I'm going to go down here in my sources and I'm going to just lock that. And that means even if the resolution changes while you're streaming, you don't have to worry that it's going to readjust your box size. You guys have no idea how deep I had to dig into the shirt drawer to find something that wasn't blue. Next, I'm going to add pulpit mic. So I go over to the left and I select the pulpit scene. And you can see this one's blank. We haven't added anything yet. I'm going to click the little plus under sources and we're going to go to NDI source. I'm going to type in pulpit mic and click OK. Now I'm going to go and select the source I didn't use before and click OK. Once again it puts me in that top left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and resize this up and move the watermark off the screen if that's what I want. Then I'm going to right click on transform and I'm going to go to edit transform. Make sure that I have scale to inner bounds set and then I'm going to go ahead and lock this scene as well. It took me like an extra 10 minutes to come up with these special effects. And now you can see when I select pulpit to alter, it'll go back and forth between one scene and the other. So I think you get the idea. You can have the pastor on the altar doing his preaching and then by clicking one button, you switch to a completely different camera where you're at the pulpit and someone can do a reading. You can have as many of these cameras as you want. All you have to do is connect them to the same Skype call. You can see right here in audio sources that you can adjust the volume level of the audio for your user. And because there's only one source in each scene, you're not really going to have a lot of problems. But there is one thing you should keep in mind. No matter who is connecting to the Skype call, their voice is all on that audio. So if you're the person on the pulpit and you're using some sort of microphone that's physically connected to the cell phone instead of the church's audio, you're going to want to mute your Skype call as soon as you're finished doing what you're doing. Just in case you make any noise, if you do, it'll come across the stream. And it'll be the same for any person in the scene. Each individual person should take it upon themselves to mute their microphone in Skype or turn it off if it has a button 
when they're not on scene. That's the easiest way to avoid unnecessary audio that you don't want on your stream. It takes a little bit of discipline, but when you're running a church service, you get into the habit and you understand what you're supposed to do. This is no different. It just takes a little practice. Now, if you're using Windows 10 and you're having trouble adding your NDI source, Windows is being kind of tricky. If your Windows 10 came with Skype or downloaded it off the App Store, for whatever reason, this doesn't want to work with the NDI source. So you get a black box. All you have to do is remove that version of Skype off your system, go to the Skype website and download the version that's for your desktop. Once you do this, you're not going to get the black screen anymore. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about setting up the network for your system. If you're all working in the same location, like in a church, you want to make sure that every device that's going to be a part of the broadcast is on the same network, wireless or otherwise. So all of the phones should be connected to the same wireless router that you're going to be running your stream on. And of course, you can't do this if you're all working remotely. But in an ideal situation, if you're doing this from your church, just make sure that everyone is connected directly to the Wi-Fi. Don't have somebody using a cellular service and somebody using another cellular service. Everyone connect to the same Wi-Fi and you're really going to get some high quality results. See, I told you the networking piece was going to be pretty painless. I know this video is a lot to unpack. There's so much information here and it's always possible that I missed some small detail. If you have problems setting something up or you just can't figure something out, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. I do respond to everyone. If you want to know how to add overlays and text elements to your stream, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.